Fierce fighting across Sudan has left hopes for a peaceful transition to civilian rule in tatters. Forces loyal to two rival generals are vying for control, and as, as is so often the case, civilians have suffered the most. At least 459 people have been killed and more than 4,000 injured in the unrest so far, according to the World Health Organization, while parts of Khartoum have become a war zone. Uh, at the heart of the clashes are two men, Sudan's military ruler, the head of the army, Abdel Fattah al-Borhan, and General Mohammed Hamdan Daglo, widely known as um, Hemeti. Now, the country's deputy and head of Rapid Support Forces paramilitary group is who he is. Now, until recently, the two men were allies who worked together to topple the and ousted Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir in 2019 and played a pivotal role in the military coup in 2021. However, tensions arose during the negotiations to in uh, integrate the RSF into the country's military as part of the plans to restore civilian rule. The key question is, who would be subordinate to whom under this new hierarchy? Well, joining us to discuss this is Peter Powell. He's a South Sudanese in diaspora and a Rotary International Peace Fellow. Thank you so much, Peter, for joining us. And uh, I think it's good morning where you are, but good evening. Uh, good morning. Good morning. It's 4.30 a.m. here in Australia. All right. Great. Um, let's start with looking at what's behind this fighting. Many would have hoped that by now uh, there would have been a transition to back to civilian rule after the toppling of Omar al-Bashir. But here we are in 2023 uh, in almost a very chaotic circumstance that many fear might become a civil war all over again. Um, Walk my uh, viewers through what's happened so far. Well, thank you uh, for the opportunity. I think you put it very right. Uh, the, after the toppling of the President Bashir in 2019, uh, the Sudanese uh, civilians in the neighboring country were offering that Sudan is in Western transition to realize uh, a democratic uh, civilian rule. Uh, but in 2021, as you previously mentioned, uh, the current two stakeholders of the conflict uh, were to go uh, to a, a transitional council of the government that were going to facilitate that transition to civilian rule. But it didn't really last for long. Uh, so now we are in 2023, uh, where those two uh, members uh, representing different faction of the army are now fighting for a control of the government. And I'm thinking, um, we're seeing two generals at war now, and we've seen what's happened. Many people are being displaced. International communities are, you know, trying to rescue uh, their people and get them out of the regions where the, you know, the fighting is going to is continuing. I beg your pardon. Um, do you see any any you know, end in sight because you see if these people were in talks and these talks have broken down and these are two generals, just like my question at the beginning, who's going to say, well, I'll stand down and, and hope for, you know, this person to lead? Uh, do we see uh, international communities trying to intervene in this matter or is Sudan going to continuously be at war? Well, it's unfortunate to, to say so, that, 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 that Sudan is going to be at war. Uh, the, the, the African Union and the, uh, the Higat uh, blocks, which uh, Sudan is part of, has, has been trying to negotiate uh, a way out from these conflicts. Uh, but the two warring parties uh, show no uh, willingness or or interest to really uh, negotiate uh, this this issue. The international community are also very concerned. They have no might to to really control now or even to say, uh, given that this this, this the, the diplomat uh, prison in Sudan from different country, the international NGOs including UN has been has to to cease operating in Sudan. So the help from outside is very limited. Uh, so it is. It is very hard to predict uh, the 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 livelihood for peace in in Sudan at at the moment. Mm. 
Uh, let's look at what's at stake now in that region because, you know, we know that Sudan, every, I mean, those of us who are listening to the news, we know that, you know, it's been a volatile region and it's bordering the Red Sea, the Sahel region and the Horn of Africa. Now, let's look at what, you know, other countries have to suffer, the likes of Ethiopia, Chad, uh, so South Sudan, your country, uh, and, um, you know, how they're having to deal with this. We're seeing that even countries like Nigeria are having to evacuate their people, some by road, some by boat, and some by air. And there are countries whose nationals are still stuck. How does this conflict affect neighboring countries? And um, how, how do you think that um, they will be able to deal with this? Because, of course, many more people from Sudan are becoming refugees um, by the day. You're, you're, you're very right. It, it is going to impact the, the neighboring country very severely. It has already been affecting them. Uh, there's a lot of people now praying to Chad. Uh, some are, are praying through, from Sudan to, to, to Egypt and to South Sudan, but also to Ethiopia and Eritrea. So, so the instability of Sudan is not going to be uh, very much uh, seen as, a, as something that will affect the livelihood of the local or citizen in Sudan. It will interrupt the livelihood and the movement, the economics uh, sort of development that is being also um, uh, run between the country with Sudan. Uh, so, so the more we have peace, then the better uh, the, the, the livelihood of the people will be restored. But I don't see it at the moment. Uh, that it is going to become a reality. What exactly do you think is at the core of this, aside from two generals fighting, do you think that there are international political interests um, that seems to be at the core of this uh, that may be fueling this crisis? Because there are those uh, who are whispering in some quarters that there might be international powers, world powers, who are uh, behind or supporting these two generals. Well, two things two thing that I've observed that uh, uh, ignited this, this, uh, uh, this, this uh, conflict, uh, I think the, the, call, the call for a, a democratic transformation of Sudan system of governance has been the core for many years that resulted to many coup and military government leading Sudan. Mm -hmm. So this, this call for a democratic transformation is going to continue creating more problem uh, in Sudan until they have really realized this aspiration. Number two, I think the control of power, I mean, the, the two generals now seem to be uh, uh, running after uh, controlling uh, the system and the government and even the resources uh, management of the country. So it, 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 it is going to be... Uh, really discuss and, and talk about these two things because as soon as one is leading the country the resource management and exploitations will be in the hand of one of them although they might not be committed to the, the democratic transformation they will invest very much in positioning their power having resource in their hand hmm. let's look at um what happens next after, you know, this deadly fighting? Because, um, I mean, you're an international peace fellow, even, even though you're from the other side of Sudan. Um, are there peace talks that are happening one way or the other? I mean, you spoke about the fact that the African Union uh, has been somewhat trying to mediate on this matter. Um, but what do you see happening after now? Because, of course, um, this fighting can go on for as long as, but... Will there be a country for these people to lead at the end of the day? I mean, before, before it became what it is today, South Sudan and Sudan, um, it used to be one country. And then, of course, one would have thought that with the division, um, there would be some you know, peace in, the, in, in both countries. Unfortunately, that's not the case today. Um, is there any plan for the South of Sudan uh, to lead some peace talks in Sudan? Well, South Sudan has been uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, platform for the warring party in, in Sudan uh, for some time now. Uh, Seen the 2021 20, uh, 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 coup, uh, 
to let the the civil uh, council administration uh, that was formed after Bachi was toppled off from power was formed. And the South Sudan were, were the facilitating uh, platform for the negotiation and the reinstitutions of the of Sudan uh, government. So I think South is doing its best at the moment to really uh, mediate between the two uh, the two worrying parties, so that Sudan can uh, can can remain uh, in peace. Because when Sudan is at war, then the operation of South Sudan in terms of the government will be very much affected. Because the resources that South Sudan is relying on delivering its services are facilitated or transit through Sudan. So any conflict in Sudan that will last long will have long-term effects on South Sudan stability. Uh, so South Sudan require to be very prominent in terms of calling and support for, uh, for a, a peaceful resolution uh, coming back to the, to the country, South, I mean Sudan. Otherwise, uh, it, it will have so much uh, uh, challenges in terms of how it could manage its uh, it, it own uh, uh, priorities. But also, a lot of people of South Sudanese are also in Sudan uh, from there. So, South can do much to bring this to an end and, and, and call for the regional uh, 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 blocks uh, such as IGAD and the African Union to uh, calm this situation down. Uh, finally, before, I, before I, we talk about um, more on peace, um, we hear that um, when there was a call for a cessation of fire, um, experts had agreed that the likes of Egypt um, were backing al Borhan, while the United Arab Emirates was backing Hemeti. Now, we also realize that, you know, there's a possibility that the likes of Libya and the Central African Republic, Chad, Ethiopia, and Eritrea are likely to play some political and even military roles in the conflict. Now, let's talk about Africa. We, I mean, if we were to look at several countries around, across the African continent that are facing some form of, you know, unrest or terror, um, one would... One would hope that we would be helping one another uh, to bring peace as opposed to fueling uh, some of these conflicts. I mean, with the fact that some of these countries like Egypt and Ethiopia might be getting refugees, why would they want to be backing uh, politically and even funding this war, knowing that more and more people might die? Well, that's a very, uh, very big question uh, uh, that you are asking, and and we too uh, in diaspora and some other members in Africa would also have the same thing. We would hope for peaceful resolution instead of uh, supporting or propagating war uh, that is uh, that is uh, devastating uh, the 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 civilian life. The very interesting thing that we have observed, and I have also shared this observation with other peace scholars, is that most of the conflicts that are displacing people in Africa, and as we have seen now in, uh, in Sudan, are very internal. They are not come outside. So it is the leadership uh, that, that has been really...